I'm currently sitting in Hut 8, where Alan Turing led the work from 1940 onwards here at Bletchley Park. His work was to determine the setting of the Enigma cipher machine, which the Nazi Germans used all throughout World War II to encrypt their secret messages. Prior to working in Hut 8, Alan Turing worked in the cottage in the stable yard. Now the work that was conducted here in Hut 8 enabled then the Allies to read all the German secret messages. There were 40,000 Enigma machines that were used during the war to encrypt these secret messages. However, there are very few around today. This is a genuine World War II Enigma machine and it's exactly the same sort of Enigma machine that was used during the war to code messages. When the Nazi Germans went to send a message, they would simply type in the message they wanted to send into the keyboard and the letters that lit up on the lamp board is the cipher text. For example, type in C and the letter S lights up. Type in V and W lights up. However, if I continue to type in V, almost every time a different letter is enciphered. And this is what makes the Enigma code so special and so difficult to crack. Now inside the Enigma machine are a series of rotors. In fact, this Enigma machine has three rotors. Every time a letter is typed in, at least one of those rotors moves forward one place. In fact, once this rotor moves around 26 times, does a whole revolution, it'll kick this middle rotor forward one place. Once this rotor does a whole revolution, it will then kick this rotor forward one place. Now inside those rotors is a series of wires. All those wires are jumbled up a little bit like spaghetti. And every time the rotor moves forward, the wires move with it. And therefore the electrical signal is forced to take a different path through the Enigma machine with every press. Now here in Hut 8, Alan Turing was able to determine the Enigma setting for that particular day. The Nazi Germans changed the settings every single day at midnight. And by knowing the setting of the day, it then enabled them to read their messages. Now there were lots of different ways of setting up the Enigma machine. One way was to remove these rotors. These rotors were swapped for other rotors. For most part of the war, there were five rotors to choose from, and they would choose a different three to put into the Enigma machine every single day. In addition to that, the Germans changed the starting position for each rotor. Each rotor had 26 different starting positions. They would also change where this rotor would kick this rotor forward one place, where this rotor would then kick this rotor forward one place as well as changing the, the orientation of the rotors, the order, the kickover points and the starting position for each rotor, they also changed the plug board settings. Now, in total, there were, were about 100,000 million, million, million different possible ways of setting up the Enigma machine. Alan Turing was able to determine the one way the Germans were setting up the Enigma machine for each day during the war. Now, when they went to send a message, as I mentioned earlier, they would type in the message into the keyboard and the letters that lit up would then be sent by Morse code to the other Enigma operators. For example, if one of the Enigma operators wanted to send the message OK, just to let them all know that, you know, they're fine, they're all right, type in O, the letter H lights up. K, the letter A lights up. So HA is the ciphertext, and then that would be sent by radio and Morse code to the other Enigma operators. The other Enigma operators, operators would also have an Enigma machine, and their Enigma machine would be set up in exactly the same way this Enigma machine was set up before I started typing in OK and they would know the setting because they would all have a secret setting sheet and that was kept secret to only the Germans. Now this rotor has moved forward two places. I'm simply going to move it back two places to get it back to that original setting. Now when I type in the cipher text HA, the plain text OK should light up. H is an O and A is a K. 
So it was very, very easy for the Germans to decipher the messages because they had access to this setting sheet. They knew the setting for, the, for that particular day of the war. However, with Alan Turing's incredible mind and with a bit of mathematics and logical thinking, he was able to work out the setting for every day of the war without access to the setting sheet.